Hi, it's Julie with Steamcat, and it's Fascinator Friday! Yay! Actually, I'm recording this a little bit earlier so I can show you some of the steps for making the Fascinator, and I'll put it all together for a final video. This is the base, and it's lined with uh, wire, and then I used some double-sided bias tape, double-fold bias tape, excuse me, to stitch it all in place. You can see the stitches here. My next step is to take a piece of flannel, and I will hit it with my steam iron after I've put this on. And what that will do will uh, hold it in place. There's just enough sticky in the buckram to hold all this in place while I do the next bit, which is covering it with this cute embroidered Sirius. Now I'm going to show you. This is a UV light, and you can see that this lights up. I'm using a UV thread for the constellation, and we'll see what happens when we turn this light off. I hope it'll be enough so you can see. Okay, now I have all the lights off, and you can see the constellation. That's kind of cool. So if you're wearing this at night, and you've charged it up with a UV light, or it's been under some regular lights for a while, this is what you'll see at night, is the constellation. Once I've put that on, I will come around and line this with some ribbon. I may glue it, I may hand tack it, and when that's done, I have some liner fabric that I will cut to shape and add in and glue that in. Now people think, oh, millinery glue, millinery glue, you can't use glue in millinery. Yes, you can. That used to be, you know, there are, there are people who say, hey, you can't use glue in hat making. Well, there's a big tradition of using glue in hat making. They used to have a big pot of glue in the middle of the work table, and it was hot glue. Hot glue. It was on a hot plate, and they could dip their brushes in it and use the glue as they needed. So yes, you can use glue in millinery. You can use hot glue. Just like everything else, you want to be careful with it and make your work look good. So don't let anyone stick their nose up in the air and tell you, hey, we must use this. la ti da I'm off to play the grand piano, because you don't. There's one more thing I want to do, and... I'm going to keep my video running during this, but I will come back and edit all this crap out so you can see what I'm going to do. <laughs> I have to get my materials. We're back! Yay! I lost my elastic. And of course it was in the been hopefully labeled hat findings, but you know how that goes. So what I've done is I have marked two spots. And I'm going to use a tiny awl, just to punch a hole. And I will run the end of this elastic through here. Of course, I'm on camera, so it's never as easy as, you know, the first one was. Okay, so... That will give me enough, that will give me a, an elastic so you can mount the hat on your head. <laughs> now I'm going to stop this again and I'll come back when I have more pieces in place. Now I have this all pinned up now and it's still a little rough but that's actually okay because I'll still be straightening this out as I go along and probably trimming some more. And then, this is going to be covered up by the ribbon. No raw edges, I hope. 
Okay, I have about 18 inches of thread that I have doubled up. And yes, that is a band-aid. I managed to punch myself while I was <laughs> putting all these pins in. It's not a good hat if you don't get a drop of blood in there. Okay, no, I didn't bleed on it, I promise. But, you know, if blood is not involved, it's not a good hat. So what I'm going to do is just catch this on my velvet and watch it go right through. So what I need to do is catch it in here. On the bias tape and then back through the velvet this is always a fun process now there will be much lathering rinsing and repeating here as I go through this process so now I'm going to stop this video and I'll come back when it's all sewed up. All right, I'm back and I've got the edge of this all sewed down. And like I said, it's going to be a little uneven, but that's okay. I have cut out kind of a circle-ish, and it will get trimmed down too, that, that I'll use to line this hat with. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use glue to tack this down. This is Helmar 450 Quick Dry Adhesive. I really, really like this stuff. It's, it's acetone-based. So, However, before I get started on this, I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks. There's a bunch of threads and junk in here. So, canned air... Alrighty, but 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 canned air isn't what they used back in the day. So what? You need to learn. There's nothing wrong with new techniques that save time and give you the same or better results. The other thing I wanted to show you. Where did it go? Here we go. Here's the needle I've been using to tack this down. It's a millinery needle. And these are more flexible than average sewing needles. So that makes it easier to get around corners and curves and the like. And if you've used one for a long time, they'll actually develop a bend in them, which is kind of interesting. But they're, they're handy needles. And you don't have to have them, but you can usually buy them at the fabric stores. Now, I'm going to pop a little glue in the center here. I'm just going to eyeball it. Let's see if that gets us a good coverage. Yes, it does. Yay. Go that way a little bit. Yay. Okay. So now I can start gluing this down in different places. And there's nothing wrong with gluing a lining down. When they talk about how you must sew this and not glue it. A lot of that uh, pertains to trimmings because back in the day, people did swap out trimmings all the time. Or when they got home, they could remove the trimmings and put them away in a box if they weren't planning to, to wear that, that hat for a while. And that kept the trimmings nice and straight and neat while they could put the hat in a hat box. So. And it also made it easier to retrim, redo the trim completely the next year. So, you know, women who weren't rich could take a hat and retrim it every year and have it last three or four years. So, yeah, there's no problem with, with using glue in a lot of situations here. But I'm going to put some just around the edge. smooth that out and put it in place. 
Now I'm going to lather, rinse, repeat around here, and I will pause until we're at the next part because this is going to take a while. Okay, we're back. I've got the the uh, ribbon all pinned in. In larger hats, this is called a head size ribbon. Your head size, obviously, you get that. So what I'm going to be doing is, well, before I show you that, I want to show you kind of the edge here. What I did was I whip stitched this around. I, I whip stitched the, the hat covering to my tape, and then I showed you how I got how I glued all that in. Now for the next step, I'm going to be taking very tiny stitches and just kind of attaching this to the edge. Make sure you can see this. It'll be very tiny whip stitches. Now, some people may have a couple of questions like, what's the deal with 18 inches of thread? Okay, that is not a hard and fast rule, but if you read books and if you're an experienced sewer, also, you know that if you have too much thread, it's going to all ball up and knot up. And 18 inches seems to be, for most people, an optimal length of thread. So your mileage or thread length may vary, but 18 inches is a good starting point if you're doing hand sewing. So why do we add the head, the head size ribbon? Well, I've talked about raw edges. Covering up the raw edges is just more aesthetic. It makes your hat look more finished. Okay, look, we're finished. Yay! Here's the back, and I'm just going to let that sit on the block for a while, and the ribbon will compress down a bit. So I was going to show you about how it was finished. You've probably seen a lot of hats with the ribbon folded over like this. What that does is create a finished look. Very simple. But also, if you get a hat, you don't know which in, which ends which, something like that denotes the back. There might be a, a folded ribbon, a label, a little bow, and I've even seen the bows in men's hats. So just something to denote the back. And, you know, you may look at that and go, what was the designer thinking? I'd rather wear it this way. And that's fine, too. But at least you know what the intent was and where the back is supposed to be. So I'm going to show this one more time. I'm just using a little UV flashlight. To... Okay, I'm activating this with the UV light, and it's not staying on for very long because this isn't a very powerful light. But there you go. You can kind of see what it looks like. And in person, it glows for a lot longer, but the cameras doesn't, camera doesn't seem to be picking it up. So there we go. This is the serious light. Are you serious? Well, I am because I made a hat. So this was Fascinator Friday, and be sure to share and enjoy or something. But uh, like the video, subscribe. Uh, it, it really helps. So thank you, and we'll see you for the next Fascinator Friday.